Hey Internet! I'm Katrina with New Media Rights. We're a nonprofit legal clinic that can help your small business get online while avoiding legal issues. And once your employees get your new online business up and running, you can get some of those crazy internet dollars, right? You'll be a dot-com millionaire! I'm so excited for you! <clears throat> but before you cash your first check, there's a big question. If you are a business owner and you pay someone to create a copyrighted work, do you actually own the copyright? To figure out if you actually own the copyright to the work someone you're paying creates, the first question you need to ask yourself as a business owner is, is the person you're paying an employee or an independent contractor? Number one, let's talk about employees first. If the person creating your work is an employee, generally you as an employer own the copyright to the creative work that employee creates. This is called the work for hire doctrine. Generally, if the work your employee creates is part of that person's regular duties of employment, then it's work for hire and you have nothing to worry about because you own the rights to that work. Here's an example of what I mean by regular duties of employment. Let's pretend you're an up and coming musician, but you pay your rent by working at the mall. So by day, you're a photographer at the mall's portrait studio, and by night, you're the lead singer of your band. While waiting for customers to come into the studio, you write songs for your band. Since you're an employee of the portrait studio, the studio owns the photos you take as part of your employment there. But they don't own the rights to the songs you wrote during your downtime because it's not part of your regular duties. You weren't hired to write songs. That's a really easy example. In the real world, it gets more complicated. Say you're an illustrator who draws a bunch of mascot designs that the client rejects. What if you turn one of them into your own signature character? Who owns that? Some employers may even require creative employees to sign a contract that assigns everything that the employee creates using company time or resources as belonging to the company. These types of agreements often show up with people like professors or scientists. If you're an employer hiring an artist type to create stuff for you, getting your employees to sign this kind of assignment agreement might be worthwhile. But they can also scare away the best artists who don't want to give you ownership of work they create in their free time. It's all about balance, and it may be useful to get a lawyer to help you put together a balanced contract that keeps everyone happy. New media rights may even be able to do that for you completely for free. Moving on. Number two, let's talk about independent contractors. Now, if the person you hired is an independent contractor, you don't own the work unless they've signed an agreement that states you own it. Said another way, even if you pay someone who is not your employee to write a book for you, unless you have a written agreement, you only own the physical sheets of paper the book is written on. You have no rights to copy, sell, or publish the book yourself. Since trying to figure out the difference between independent contractors and employees could be a whole set of videos on its own, let's just finish this with an easy to understand example. Let's pretend I know two screenwriters. Screenwriter A was given $20,000 by a producer to ghostwrite a screenplay. The only instructions that the producer gave her were to write a script about vampires in high school and have it finished in the next six months. Because the producer had such limited control over the way that screenwriter A wrote the screenplay, screenwriter A is almost certainly an independent contractor. This means unless the producer gets her to sign a written assignment agreement, the producer will have paid $20,000 only for the 110 pieces of paper that make up the screenplay. The producer will not have the right to copy that screenplay or make a movie based on it. Now, here's the second screenwriter I know. Screenwriter B was hired by a producer to work in the production company office. The producer makes her write at the office for several hours a day so he can oversee her work. The producer regularly works with her, discusses the story with her, and suggests specific edits. 
He gives her paid holidays and vacation time. Because the producer controls so many aspects of how the screenwriter works, this screenwriter is definitely an employee. This means no written agreement is necessary, and the producer can turn that vampire high school screenplay into Hollywood cash. See the difference? I know it's confusing. Finally, it's worth knowing that assignment agreements must be made in writing. They cannot be oral agreements. So, would you agree if I gave you an assignment? Good. Your assignment is to donate some money at our YouTube channel or at newmediarights.org. Your contribution keeps these videos coming. Oh, no, no, no. I got too excited! <laughs> This is like the most funny I, thing I, I get excited. <laughs> I get excited too when I get to throw money around. Yeah.